What's up, Laker fans? The Lakers have been relying on horn sets more and more often in their half-court offense. Let's take a look at how they run it. If you aren't familiar with horns, it's a set that features your four and five at the elbows, your two and three in the corners, and your point guard up top. There are a number of plays that you can run out of this set, and we're gonna take a look at a couple of them. The play call for it is the horn symbol like you would throw up at a heavy metal concert, and the way the Lakers do it is they'll have usually a color come afterward. It looks like this is horns green, or it might be horns gray. I'm sure some of you are better lip readers than I am. Now let's actually look at how they run it. Let's flash back to last year really quickly. After Russell makes the entry pass to Randall, he goes to the same side as Randall to set a down screen for Ingram in the corner. As that's happening, Mozgov sets a down screen for Nick Young, who is the first option on this play. This play was called Weak Elbow Get. Fast forward to this year. When Lonzo makes the entry pass into the high post, he goes to the opposite side of where he passed it. So now the shooting guard is receiving two screens rather than just the one from the big. They usually run this for KCP, and it usually results in a dribble handoff, as you see here. Here's the exact same play a few more times so you can get the hang of it. but it doesn't always have to end with a KCP jumper. The handoff with the big basically functions as a pick and roll. After Lopez makes the handoff, he pops out because Mozgov is hanging out in the paint and he's got an open look. and the big who doesn't receive the entry pass that's setting the down screen for KCP eventually becomes the skip pass on the pick and roll. This is particularly good for Lopez and Kuzma because of their outside shooting ability. This also puts Kuzma in a position to attack closeouts, although he isn't successful on any of these. They've run this a few times with Ingram in KCP's spot, but that's happening less and less. Ingram isn't really a threat to pull up for the jumper off of this handoff, so that can stall the play out. If they want to counter the KCP handoff, they can flow into two-man game on the ball side, and that's more effective action for Ingram. Flex motion is another action that the Lakers run out of horns. I would describe a lot of what you're about to see as good action that's run poorly. Flex motion also starts with that entry pass into the elbow. The first option will be Clarkson getting a lob off of a back screen, but Kuzma doesn't make contact on it, which will be a theme, not just for Kuzma, but for the whole team. The next option is Clarkson setting this cross screen for KCP to cut across the lane. That's called a flex cut. After KCP cuts, Clarkson receives a down screen from Kuzma. This is the most common option on flex motion. But since no one made contact on their screens, no opportunity is really created. Let's watch this play again without all of the pauses so you can get an idea of how the motion works. you 
notice that it's always Jordan Clarkson at point guard on these. I believe this is Luke's way of trying to prevent Clarkson from being too ball dominant when he's running this position. You'll also notice that the screens are almost always bad. This goes one step deeper into the progression where Bogut posts up after setting the down screen for Clarkson. This is good action, but ideally that's a guy like Lopez getting the post up rather than Bogut. Here are a couple of possessions where they actually make the pass to the flex cutter, although neither of them were successful. Ideally you want to complete this pass for a layup right around here, but Hart isn't open so it turns into a post up. And at this part of the season, the Lakers don't really know what to do after it gets to this point of the progression. This also creates space for the big on the elbow to call his own number if he likes his matchup. The Lakers run a lot of double high ball screens out of horns where the point guard gets to choose which direction he wants to use the screen. One guy rolls and then the other guy pops. And of course the point guard can just keep it off of this as well. They'll also reverse this action into some two-man game. The point guard will pass the ball to the pop guy who will then swing it to the weak side wing. Then the pop guy will go to set a ball screen and that's where you have your two-man game. The Lakers have run a few other horns variations, but they're usually out of timeouts and they've only run them once or twice. If they run them more throughout the year, I'll break them down later. For now, I'll just let them play and you can see if you like any of them. One thing that's plagued the Lakers over the last few years is their lack of counters. If their initial action doesn't work, you'll usually see a little bit of confusion and then a ball screen. There's nothing wrong with running a high ball screen when things break down, that's what most teams do, but the Lakers need to get beyond their first option on these.
but every once in a while you'll see a glimmer that they can build on. Randall's being overplayed here so he spins off of it for the lob, but doesn't get it. That's okay. Then he seals his man in the post, and that's where he can do his damage. The essence of running counters effectively is using what the defense does against them. Watch Clarkson here. When he goes to set the screen for the flex cut, Washington switches it, so now Kelly Oubre is on him. We saw earlier that the next action on a flex motion is usually him getting the down screen from Brewer here. But switches are vulnerable to slip screens because Oubre is on the other side of Clarkson at the moment of the switch. Both Clarkson and Randall read that, and this is the result. This is supposed to be that handoff play for Ingram in the corner, but Lonzo slips it. Him and Bogut don't connect, but that's what they were trying to do. And lastly, there are times where the Lakers get a little deeper into the progressions on these plays, which I hope to see more of as the season goes on. Here JC sets the down screen on that handoff play, but then pops out for a jumper of his own. Ideally on all of these plays, all five guys are options, but the Lakers are nowhere near that point. Alright, that'll do it for this one. The goal of Laker Film Room is to provide Laker fans with thoughtful content that helps you enjoy the game on a deeper level. I'm able to do that because I don't work for a major publication that wants me to cover the most sensational material because it gets the most clicks. As a result, I rely on the support of Laker fans to help me produce my work. If you believe in what I do, please click either the Venmo or Patreon link below. Thank you so much. I'll catch you guys next time.